Hi everybody, welcome to my review of the Sharpstar 76 EDPH triplet refractor. Since First Light Optics were very kind to send me this refractor and a few other pieces of kit, I have tried to get out there on as many clear nights as possible, which hasn't been many, and get out there and give it a go and let you know what it performs like. So here's my review of my initial findings. Don't forget, if you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and please like my video. Thank you very much. Okay, here's how the uh, refractor comes. Comes in this uh, just a cardboard box, really. Uh, but of course, always the warning is do not use the telescope to look at the sun through. Um, yeah, it causes irreversible damage to your eye, so wouldn't recommend that unless you're using the proper filters and really know what you're doing. So whenever you open the box, it comes lovely packaged like this, really nicely protected. And there it is all wrapped up in bubble wrap in there as well. And of course, First Light Optics always get Esri to test the refractors to make sure that they perform as they should. So great service from them. So here's what comes in the package. You've got the telescope itself. You've got the finder shoe and you've got instructions and uh, checklist for quality control. So here's the refractor. So you can see it's a 76 millimeter aperture, 418 millimeter focal length. It comes with a Vixen type dovetail, so you can attach it to any of the Skywatcher mounts or any mount that's got a Vixen type saddle on top of it as well. And it comes with a finer shoe too. So that just screws onto the ring up here using these two uh, threads and then two screws and then the focus lock screw goes under here as well. So there's the finder shoe fitted on there. So the tube itself is 333 millimeters long. It's got a 76 millimeter aperture, 418 millimeter focal length. So that means it's an F 5.5. So it's not particularly fast, but it is really nice. I quite enjoy your news now actually at the moment. And the optical tube assembly weighs about 2.9 kilograms. So just under three kilograms. So you'll need to take that into account with whatever you're mounting on if it's restricted with weight on a small mount or something like a star adventurer then you you know it's got five kilograms so you'll have to watch what accessories and camera you use with that because that could tip it over to five kilograms but i'm using it with the 183 mm pro camera from zwo it's a mono camera, 5,496 pixels by 3,672 pixels, and it's a mono camera. I went back to a mono camera about three years ago. Those of you who've read my blog for a number of years will know that I got a Altair Hypercam about three years ago, and I just got very frustrated with it. So I've gone back to doing mono because I find that so much easier to use. You can produce color images if you've got filters, and because a mono camera is far more sensitive, so you can get much more detail out of it than you can with a color camera. So this is the camera I'm using with it. And these are the initial results taken with, with the uh, camera through the telescope. So this is hydrogen alpha. So it's using, using the hydrogen alpha filter. Because most of the times when it's been clear, the moon's been in the sky. So I've had to resort to just hydrogen alpha most of the time. There has been one night where I got some uh, red, green and blue data, and I'll show you those results there. So this is the Tadpole Nebula, and you can see the tadpoles quite nicely coming out here. There is one or two problems with the tracking on here, but, uh, you know, these were my initial results. So I weren't too fussed about that, and it wasn't with the focal reducer field flattener in there. So if you look around the edges of the image, you can see that the stars tend to point towards the center of the image. If we go to the other side, the top right, you can see they're pointing down in that direction. If we go down here, the stars are pointing in that direction. And if we go down here, the stars again are pointing in that direction towards the middle. So it does suffer from coma because it's a triplet. They do. Okay. Uh, so you need to correct that. 
So to correct that, it comes with this focal reducer field flattener. There isn't a field flattener that isn't a focal reducer that I'm aware of at the moment. So it takes it down to F4.5 and it's a 0.8 times focal reducer and it does correct for that coma around the edges. So it comes with a nice diagram here that tells you how far the camera needs to be from the uh, field flattener to make sure that you get the best images out of it because if the focal distance isn't correct it won't correct properly okay so you need to get your camera and everything the right distance from the uh, field flattener to make sure it works properly so here's the uh, focal reducer field flattener seen side on this is the bit that screws into the telescope and here's where you put your camera off axis guider etc 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 okay but it is about half a kilogram in weight so be aware of that because despite the fact the uh, telescope is 2.9 kilograms this adds another half a kilogram onto that as well and if you've got a camera on there guide scope etc 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 it can add up quite a bit so here's the uh, view looking in from the camera end and here's the view looking in from the scope end and so you go from this view here, so this is that initial image that I took with um, the refractor without the uh, focal reducer field flattener in, and you can see just how much bigger a field of view you get. But of course, it is a, a bit brighter. Again, it's a hydrogen alpha image. You can see we're getting much more of the outer edge around here, and we're getting a lot further around the nebula so it's a much larger field of view and how big is that field of view well if you look at this image that i took of the horsehead nebula you can fit that in really really nicely but look at the size of the moon this is an image of the moon that i took using exactly the same setup and you can see just how big that field of view is so it's it's quite substantial nice wide field of view for very nice wide images so you're not going to see nebula in great detail if you wanted to zoom in onto the horse head nebula of course you'll need a longer focal length telescope so 76 millimeter aperture 480 millimeter focal length that gives it an f 5.5 without the focal reducer but with the focal reducer that reduces that to 400 342 millimeter focal length so it makes it a little bit faster at f4.5 don't forget the optical tube assembly weighs 2.9 kilogram plus 0.5 kilogram for the field flattener focal reducer uh, as well so that takes it up to uh, three and a half kilograms so here it is so you have to unscrew the end of the telescope and screw the field flattener into the telescope and then there it is there's the field flattener all screwed into the uh, draw tube of the telescope and you've got three screws around here so while you're imaging if your camera isn't orientated exactly the way you want it you can unscrew those three and rotate everything so that uh, you can get everything where you want it to be one of the problems i did have was with the off axis guider this is the zwo off axis guider that First Light Optics also sent me to have a go with it. I got it working initially with the telescope, but when I started to use the field flattener, I started to have real problems with it. I just couldn't get it focused. The stars didn't look right, etc., etc. And I soon found out why. If you look at the end of the scope, so this is looking into the field flattener. This is the field flattener in here. And you can see this is the prism for the off-axis guider this had to be so far in to clear this inner ring that it was too far in so i couldn't get the camera close enough to get focused so that's a problem so if you want one of these telescopes and you need the field flattener then you're going to have trouble with an off-axis guider in the end i had to resort to using an old finder and putting the guide camera on that and putting that on the shoe to become my guide scope because the off-axis guide just could not be used with this setup with the field flattener in place so that's something to be aware of so there it is all ready for action i said in my previous uh, video that i'd let you know how i got on so you've already seen a couple of results 
So here's the Jellyfish Nebula, taken in Hydrogen Alpha again. The moon was uh, quite bright at that time. Of course, in Gemini, in the foot of Gemini. So this is one of the stars in the foot of Gemini. This is an RGB image of the open cluster Messier 35 in Gemini and the smaller cluster NGC 2158, about twice the distance over here. And then this is an LRGB and hydrogen alpha image of M81 and M82s showing some beautiful structure within uh, M81 itself and some of the little faint background galaxies showing up quite nicely, but also picking up some nice hydrogen alpha activity in M82 as well. This is the Horsehead Nebula in Hydrogen Alpha again. Show some lovely, lovely detail in there. And of course, I was really pleased with how well it handled Alnitac, the really bright star, the left hand star in Orion's belt just here, which it always gives lots of problems when you're trying to do imaging like this. But in this case, it's not too bright or big at all. So you get the flame nebula here, lots and lots of detail in the flame nebula. You get the bright nebulosity going down here with, of course, the horse head superimposed on that really, really nicely, showing some really nice detail as well. And then you've got the reflection nebula showing up in here too. And you've even got some nice little structure showing in the dark nebulosity beyond here and you see the difference in the star density on this side compared to this side where all this dust is blocking out the stars in our milky way from being seen and then of course i like to mess with my images so what i've done i've taken some really old dslr data from an image i took ooh, a good number of years ago in tenerife and i've superimposed that onto the nebula so that it gets a little bit of color so it's got all the detail of the hydrogen alpha but all the information from the color unfortunately in this case the stars in the dslr image are really really bloated so you can see these blue halos around some of the really bright stars which is a bit of a shame but of course with imaging eventually once we get a really clear dark night when the moon's not about i will be able to capture some red green and blue images and be able to fill in the proper detail so i don't get those blue halos another result as well was the uh, rosette nebula showing some really nice detail in here too and of course because this huge field of view we were able to get the whole of the rosette in the field of view and capture that so we're showing some really nice structure within it as well the stars again don't come up too big so that's really really nice and a lovely flat field all the way across the field of view so really really nice and then of course same as i did with the horse and nebula i've added some color data from one of my old color images so that we get some color out of it and of course stars in that one weren't quite as bad as the horse head image so that's a much better balanced image than the one before so there that's my initial results so again if you've enjoyed the video please subscribe to my youtube channel and of course like my video as well so that's my review of the sharp star 76 edph hope you enjoy it any questions pop them in the chat thank you very much Bye bye